we have three young wonderful young men who is getting ready to move to another stage in life and we're so grateful um, they've been committed and dedicated men to the house of God and um, they're getting ready to graduate high school so I'm gonna ask the Quan, I'm going to ask Zach, I'm going to ask Jordan to come up here with me and we're going to celebrate and we're going to honor these young men for the wonderful, 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 wonderful next level they're stepping into and um, I asked them to come up because um, you know a lot of times you have people come, young men come to your church and um, they, they go on and they graduate and you really don't know much about them and um, I said, you know what, man, I, I want to give you guys an opportunity to kind of just share some stuff from your heart and um, share some stuff uh, with the church about where you're going and what's going on. And I want to kind of interview these guys and get y'all to know a little bit about them and, um, and, and share some things. So I, I got some questions that I, um, I want to um, share with these brothers or ask these brothers and um, aren't y'all glad these brothers graduating y'all now um, I, 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 I say that with, with a lot of um, celebration because I was looking the other day um, and, and of course it's no secret all of these are young African American males and um, if, you, if you don't know the statistics in America of young African American males graduating from high school right now is only about 15%. Just, just about one out of 10 um, African, male, African American males graduate from high school. And um, to have three right here from this church, I am godly proud, we are excited. We celebrate you guys. And and these are and these are not these are not just young men who just uh, just come to church on Sunday mornings. These guys are involved in this church, Sunday school, uh, Wednesday night worship. I mean, you name it. Zach, he comes over from the drums. He runs back and ushers. He runs back, get the cart and and sells y'all Reese's pieces and Snickers and. These brothers help out in so many different ways. Jordan ushers and, and Buddy helps out in so many different ways and so many different ways. These guys are involved in this church and these guys are our family, y'all. These guys are our family. These are like our sons. And um, I'm, I'm godly proud of you guys and um, and so i uh, really, really happy about this next stage of life you guys are stepping into. I, I remember, uh, other than you, Zach, I, re I definitely remember both you and Buddy. I, it's it's kind of me. I remember when both of you were born. I remember mo both of you were born and, and, and how you guys have grown up and become the men that you are. And um, it's just a tremendous thing to see you guys mature. Man, y'all got hair all on your face now. And, and you got girls liking you and you liking girls and, and all and this, that, and the other. And you guys are getting ready to move on. And and uh, we are excited for you. So I uh, I got some questions. I'm, I'm going to ask these guys. And um, and so uh, I said, man, let, let, let me share some stuff with y'all. So uh, let's do this. Um, um, gra grab those three mics. I get, I, so y'all won't have to th um, throw mics around. And, and um, you grab those three mics and let VCC get to know y'all a little bit. Is this all right today, church? All right, all right, all right. And I'm not doing this because I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got a word. I, I woke up ready to preach this morning. I woke up ready to preach. So I might, I might still preach to y'all about 4 o'clock on the day. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I might be the only one in here. I might preach until everybody walk out. But, but uh, no, on the serious tip, I, I, I wanted to spend some time with these young men and, and let you guys get to know them a little bit. So uh, real quick. I sent you guys, uh, hit you up with some questions real quick. And um, uh, of course, like y'all heard me share, there's a lot of young men um, who are not graduating, a lot of young men who are um, in all kind of juvenile and delinquent type of activity. And um, there's not only people here that really could benefit from any advice that y'all would give them, but there's also, I'm sure, people that's watching and people who will watch this, this message um, and this service um, I want to first of all just maybe get some advice that y'all might have for any young men in particular and even probably some young ladies 
some, some, some advice that y'all would give any of them who are in school? What's some things that y'all would share to them right now as they go along in school? Well, I would say stay away from the crowd. Okay. Because you got to be a leader and not a follower. So if you're going to do anything, you lead by example and, you know, not let anybody persuade you to do anything that you know you don't supposed to do. So you'll have a lot of that as well. Okay, good. So peer pressure, if you want to say. Yeah, yeah, stay away from crowd, peer pressure, those kind of things. That's good. That's good. How about um, you, Zach? I said hang with people that's going to persuade you to, you to do better in life and, uh, and to don't, don't get caught up in the drama at school because there's so much drama going at school. And it's, it's easy to, to, get, to get in trouble with the heart got up. So just hang with people who are going to motivate you to do better. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. How about you, Jordan? Just to add on to those two answers, uh, don't try to live life too fast, you know. Like, if you're in high school, be in high school. Don't try to live outside of high school. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy high school. Yeah, yeah. So. That's good. That's good. Uh, how many of y'all you wish you was back in high school? Any of you adults? You, uh, you know, we couldn't wait till we got out. Then, we, then about three days after we got out, we couldn't wait to go back. I know that's how it was. And, and that's really good advice. You young people that are in school, don't try to live life too fast. Enjoy high school. There's so many different things I wish I would have done while I was in school. And I know there's a lot of things that you're involved in, Jordan, like, like FFA and, and other different things that you're in. I, I wish I would have joined all that. So I still to date say, man, I wish I would have joined FFA so I can grow my own farm and all that stuff, man. We uh, actually had our banquet uh, this past Thursday, and I won a $1,000 scholarship for the FFA. So. $1,000 scholarship. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. Now, now just because y'all hear him say he got a thousand dollar scholarship, don't mean don't bless. He not saying don't bless him with any more money. <laughs> the motor Mary, you know, if you you got something in an envelope you already got for him to go in a in a card, he don't don't stop it. Don't stop. So that, that's some good advice. All right, real quick. Um, you know, I know you guys are involved in this church, and y'all have heard me preach probably hundreds of times. You've been in Sunday school. You know, you've heard me give a lot of scriptures. You heard us in class give a lot of scriptures. And in your own personal time, there's a lot of scriptures you've heard. But what has been your favorite scripture, um, each one of y'all? What's been your favorite scripture that you've held on to um, uh, while in My favorite school? scripture is uh, Proverbs 16 and 3. Com commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will, will succeed. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Proverbs 16 and 3. That's a good one, bro. All right. Uh, I think my favorite scripture, actually, Deacon Steve read it to us about three or four weeks ago in Sunday school. And it was a uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all in thine heart yeah. and lean not into thine own understanding. You know? yeah. And uh, it's a lot of things that we don't understand as teenagers. And that God will show to us eventually. So you just got to trust in him and know that he'll give you the answer. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. What about you, buddy? Well, mine was Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. It says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. That's good. That's good. That's good. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right, guys, I, you know, w with school, you know, a lot of times we have, have subjects that we kind of don't like, but then we have subjects that we really kind of drawn to. What has been your favorite subject in school? Easy, lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I get 100 in that every day. And then we got this, you, we got this, lunch, got this lunch lady. She gives you some extra on the side. So she yeah, gives some extra on the Brenda. side. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, it, it's not like having a good lunch person. I know exactly what you're talking about. I, uh, real quick, when I was in school, I'm thankful to God for Brother Dale. I never paid for any chicken nuggets or Hawaiian punch while I was in school. <laughs> Brother Dale worked at the a la carte line in the high school when I was in school. And I used to go over to Brother Dale. Even though I had money, I'd be like, Brother Dale, go ahead and hook a brother up, man. And he always hooked me up. And um, I, them chicken nuggets and boy... And that, that Hawaiian punch was always right up my alley, man. So I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. What about, what, what about you, man? My favorite subject is uh, math. I just like math. You like math? I like math. Okay. All right. What about you, Joy? Uh, history and government. History and government? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like politics, so. Okay. Okay. It almost kind of seems like Jordan is, has a future in politics, don't he? I think, I think we need to be getting ready to vote for him, maybe for governor or something. And we start campaigning for him. I, 
I think that's, that, that's somewhere in his future. That's somewhere in his future. All right, so what was your most disliked subject? What subject you just didn't like that much? I go first. You go first on that? <laughs> Government and um, economics. Government and economics, you didn't like those. Okay, all right. Yeah, I would have to say the same subject because our teacher was so boring. She talked in the same tone through the whole class. So all right, I hope she's not I watching. I hope you're not watching this, okay? <laughs> no, it was a bad thing because I, I sat in the front row, but I went to sleep in the front row too. So. Oh, man. But I did wake up when it was time to wake up and do when, work. When I passed the, the class. So. Okay, okay. All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. That's good stuff. What about you, Jordan? What, what, what subject you just didn't care much about? Science. Science? I don't really like science. Yeah. It was just too many formulas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hated that whole um, formula, periodic the periodic table. table. I think that came from hell, you know. I think <laughs> the devil created that whole thing. Man, I, I don't know, man. That just, ah, gosh. You know, I, I just didn't, I never understood that thing. Science, I changed my subject. I changed my major in college about seven times trying to escape chemistry, and I still had to take it. I, mean, I, I just didn't like science at all. All right, so that's cool. All right, what about, you know, there's always a, a favorite teacher that you have when you're in school. Mean still today, my, I still say my favorite teacher was Mr. Goodson. Um, I love that guy. He, he, he helped me to understand math in an incredible way, prepared me for college math and for calculus. So um, real quick, uh, who's your favorite teacher while you was in school? Well, I have two favorite teachers. I have um, Miss Dix and Mr. Archer. Mr. Oh. Archer, he the one that he helps anybody with anything. And yeah. then Miss Dix, is nothing now I haven't asked of her that she haven't helped me with. That's through college, like college work, whatever the case may be. She always been there, so. That's good stuff, good stuff. All right, what about you, Zach? Mine's not a teacher, it's a staff member, but uh, it's, it's um, Miss Avis. Okay. I like Miss Avis because she, she's a godly woman. She, she talked to me, she tried to Keep me on the right path, so I really like her. Good stuff, yeah. good stuff, good stuff. What about you, Jordan? Uh, one of my ag advisors, Tom Harris, we call him Bub. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not only is he a teacher, but he knows a lot about the Bible, and he's always talking to us about life and how to make good choices and good decisions in life, so he really helped out a lot. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of times our favorite teachers and favorite people who work at the school um, come, it becomes those who, who gives us advice and helps us with our future goals. And it's not just people just teaching stuff. And what I'm hearing from y'all, these people that's your favorite are people who really just helped you along the way and gave you wonderful encouragement and wonderful advice. And so that's, that's, that's really good. Um, just a few, more guys, a few more guys. How has your relationship with God I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Let me deal with it. I'm sorry. I'm skipping one. I'm skipping one. I'm sorry. I want to make sure I don't miss this one. All right. The next one is, what are your future goals? Are you guys getting ready to graduate? You guys are getting ready to move to another level. Uh, what are your future goals? Where do you see yourself at in, in a few years from now? What are your plans? Well, my plans is to make it to the NFL. Well, that's plan B. Well, plan A is to get my degree in physical therapy, and I want to branch out to athletic training. So if the NFL thing don't work, I still have that to fall back on. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. My future goal is to become a, a, a um, paramedic slash uh, firefighter. Okay. And just and just uh, give back to the world, save people's lives. That's good. That's good. Good stuff, man. That's good. What about you, Jordan? Uh, I want to get a degree in business, you know, probably management or marketing, eventually own my own company and give back to our community because they gave so much to us. So. That's right. Okay, good, man. Good. You might need to do something like politics on the side, uh, something like yeah. too, man. You just you're just such a likable person, man. I think I think you could do our world a, a bit a big help, man. That's just something to keep in mind. Um, real quick, how has your relationship with God impacted your life while you're in school? Well, before church, you really didn't. I really didn't appreciate things, and then coming to church when Coach Jay used to come to the house every Sunday and drag me to his truck because I didn't yeah. want to come. <laughs> Eventually, it wore, he wore down on me, and, you know, it it showed me to appreciate my talents and not to hide it. Like, mm -hmm. I used to hide a lot mm -hmm. of my talents, and mm -hmm. I never showed it, but it showed me that I'm, you know, I'm worth it, and, I'm, okay. you know, I'm, it's worth showing my talents off because it'll get you somewhere in life. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. What about you, Zach? How, how's your relationship with God impacted your life? Um, uh, it's impacted my life a lot because, because like, Back in middle school, kind of, kind of freshman year, 
you know, I knew about God, but I would never talk about God. I was always try to try to fit in with people, not show them that, you know, I'm a Christian, Christian God. And finally, you know, when they sit in my room, I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm like, Zach, you don't, you don't have to be, you don't have to fit in with people just to make friends. You know, you can come out and tell them that you go to church and you Christian, you don't have to do what they do. Yeah. So I started coming out, then people started liking me more. They, I just became a, 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 a little love bug or something. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> A, a love bug. Yeah, a love bugs aggravating. We try to get them off our cars and stuff. That's good stuff, though, man. That's good stuff. That's good, man. That's great. What about you, Jordan? How has uh, your relationship with God impacted your life? Uh, much like Zach, I started when I was younger, like in middle school, towards the beginning of ninth grade. wasn't much. Uh, I wasn't like I knew. Yeah, like you said, knew about God, but we weren't really like living for Him, you know. But uh, as I got older. And uh, I started realizing, like, he was blessing me even though I wasn't living for him. Yeah. And once I started living for him, started living right, reading the Bible every now and then. Then I started picking up the pace of reading the Bible, learning uh, and taking stuff from you, my dad, and everybody else who was older and giving me uh, information about the Bible. I realized, like, he was blessing me more. So if the more studying I did, it seemed like the more he blessed me. Yeah. So the more yeah. I served him, the more he blessed me. I realized that that could help me out in life. So I just, it just, like, it's been impacted ever since then. So. Awesome, 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 awesome. One last question um, before we move on is, is uh, how has this church in particular impacted your life since you've been in school? And, and again, you guys, have, you guys have been like a piece of furniture here in this church, man. I mean, you guys have just been here and, um, you know, and I know like you're going to Liberty and you're going up to Atlanta and you're going to be in school. And so I know you got, you, your lives are going to change tremendously in, in a huge way. Um, but, but other than that, how has this church impacted your life? Well, it impacted mine a lot. Um, they're like a second family. It's like you can go to anybody in this church and if they got it, they're going to do it. Yeah. You know, if yeah. they if they can help out, they will help out. Yeah. And that's one thing I think is different from a lot of churches I have attended. Like mm. a lot of people in some churches you'll see they're all for themselves. They're all for an image. But mm -hmm. the, here they all the love, you know, mm -hmm. to try to help the next person out. Yeah. Because they want to see people make it. Yeah. And you don't see that much in a lot of churches. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Zach, what about you, man? This church. This church impacted my life a whole lot. Um, just by coming, you know, and, and like people loving on you, and you know, you know what I mean. I'm pretty sure any lady in here they can take me behind the church and beat me if they want to because I'm just like <laughs> their own child. I ain't really gotta get in trouble by my mama, but I like this church though. Pastor Matt's been the positive stuff in my life. I hit him up some time, hit him up, ask him for some wisdom and stuff. He helped me out sometimes. Good stuff, yeah. man. Good. That's good. That's good. And let me say this. Let me say this about Zach. Of course, Zach them. Um, they used to live in Lake Butler, and um, um, Sister Denise. Of course, she had to move to Gainesville so she could be closer to her doctors, and um, and so she could be taken care of health wise. And I never forget Sister Denise sharing with me. She said that you know uh, Zach said, "Okay, we're moving to Gainesville, but we're not gonna move our church membership." Or you, you, we could move, we could change schools, but we ain't changing churches. And um, that, that really blessed my life, you know, because when you got people like that that you're connected to, it really, really impacts your life. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you're a part of my life, Zach, and, and just to see you grow. And, um, man, Zach has even slimmed up. And I, I had some old pictures of, of Zach looking at the other day and um, probably remember when we used to go out there and play flag football. And, and man, Zach is like... He's like a, a slim fast commercial man. I mean, he's a he's a whole has a whole different body, and uh, he's active on the foot was on the football working team. Working oh, you were working out. Girl, so I say, say you look good like that. So I oh, girl, tell you look sexy. You look good. All right, okay. All right, all right, all right. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Jordan, how about you, man? How's this church impacted your life? Uh, ever since we've been here, you know, um, going on those youth trips to see colleges. Like, yeah. giving us that opportunity to really get out there in the world, and that's really impacted us a lot because it makes you want to actually go to college and be something. Yeah. And with people behind you like this all the time pushing you and giving you advice to be successful, you have no choice but to be successful. So that's it's really impacting. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on. Thank God for these guys right there. Um, you guys.
Okay. I, I also, I, I, want, I, I gave him the opportunity. I said, you know what? Um, I now don't want to interview you, but hey, if you got some, some words of wisdom you want to share with the church, um, hey, we'll love to hear, hear from you guys. And, um, um, you know, so I'm, uh, who, who, wanna go for, who wants to go first? Uh, Jordan, you want to go first? Uh, I just, one thing I wanted to say is something I heard Pastor say in one of his sermons about uh, trusting in God all the time. And a lot of times you'll look for answers in other places instead of the church house. And he's always saying, you can find your answers in the church house or in the Bible. And I've been doing that since I've been in here, hearing that. And uh, it's helped me out a lot. I just want to tell y'all, uh, you can always look to God for any answer. And if you don't understand it at first, he'll eventually show you the light. So just follow God. Amen. 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 Uh, I just want to kind of share, like, this new chat that we're about to open up in our lives, uh, you know, new chapter, you know, we, we shouldn't leave the church house. We should always stay connected to God because through God, he will bless us even the more if we show him that we're staying in touch with him, making time to read his word and come to church. And like, uh, like, um, you know, just don't leave God. Just stay close to him. That's all. Amen. Amen. Um, but the advice I would give is always put God first. Um, never, never try to follow. Like, just make sure you never try to follow because you'll never get anywhere like that. Um, my mama beat it into me to be a leader and not a follower anyway. So that's basically all I would say. Just make sure that you keep God first and, you know, don't let no one say that you can't because mm -hmm. you're going to hear that a lot in your life. Somebody's right. going to turn you down, you go hear no, and you're going to hear that you can't do it or you can't right. be this person. Never try to be somebody else. Be yourself because one day when you are successful, somebody's going to want to be you. Right, right, right. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. You know, um, on Wednesday night, I shared that um, a, an alarming statistic that is happening right now with young people. They say that 70% of young people after they graduate high school, they never go back. And um, that's pretty alarming, you know, because, I mean, we've seen it here in our church. I've seen it in so many other churches where after young people, after they graduate school, and I, when I say they leave the church, not just particularly their church, but at the church at large. They don't even go to any church after they leave. You know, a lot of people, they have this can't wait till I graduate syndrome. I can't wait till I become old and I ain't never going back. Um, my hope and prayer is that that is something that doesn't fall into your heart. I want to say to all of you, um, like you say, stay with the church. Stay committed to God. You know, as you go to Liberty, I mean, my gosh, you're going to have a, a wonderful opportunity. I mean, you, you're going to have church all the time. You know, as you, go to, as you go up around Atlanta, man, find yourself a good church. Of course, Zach, you know, where, wherever, you, wherever you go and whatever you do, stay committed to the house of God. Uh, we're going to stay committed to you, you guys. We're going to stay in contact with you. Uh, we're going to make sure we send you guys care packages and make sure we're on top of you. And, and you know, you're going to get texts from me now and then. And, you know, I'm going to be making sure you're doing the right thing, making sure, you know, you, you, you're you not in the wrong environment and you're not with the wrong friends. Um, I'm going to stay on top of you, you know, and don't, don't, don't try to avoid me. You know, when I call, don't, don't silence the phone, you know. <laughs> Because I, I, I want to make sure you guys are doing the right thing. Uh, and because you guys are like our sons. Um, this is a proud moment um, for us as a church. Um, this is a proud opportunity for us as a church. And we are super excited about this next step you guys are taking in life. Um, you guys are going to always be in our thoughts. You're going to always be in our prayers. Um, I'm looking forward to the day where in this church we're going to perform you guys' weddings, where we're going to be in here to baptize your babies. We're going to be in here. We're going to grow old together. We're going we're gonna to grow old and go to heaven together. And so we're, we're excited about this, and we're excited about what God is doing. St again, stay committed to God and watch God do extraordinary things in your life. Let's thank God for them again today, church. Listen. I want the three of you to come down here. I want to pray for you. And um, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to ask every, every saved man to come up here and stand behind these men. I want to, I want to pray for them. And uh, you come and you play something soft for me. Um, Josh, you three guys, um, y'all come down here. Y'all, You three come and face me. And I'm going to ask the men of our church to come and stand behind you guys. I want to pray for you. And
And um, we want to pray that you guys, again, make godly choices and make godly decisions and make wise choices. Uh, we pray a special hedge of protection around you. You know, um, African-American men are becoming extinct. If they're not dying, we're passing by prisons and we're passing by detention centers and jail houses that are being built for you. Um, and our prayer is that um, you'll continue for the rest of your life, be able to drive by a prison and not be in a prison. You'll be able to drive by a cemetery and not be in a cemetery. You know, keep God, keep God first. You know, these scriptures you guys quoted that are your favorite scriptures. You know, um, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. You know, and Proverbs 16 and 3, Ephesians 4, 25 through 27. Don't let your anger get the best of you. You know, you'll find yourself in situations where you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested on that football field. You're going to be tested in liberty. You know, um, and church, if y'all can stand, we're going to pray. I'm going to ask y'all to pray with me, with them. Um, you're going to be tested in college. You know, uh, sometimes things might not go your way. Um, but I want you to know, you ain't coming back here until 2000 and at least 19. You're not coming back here. We're not going to look up and we're not going to be back there. We're not going to say, hey, what is Buddy doing here? Is he just coming here visiting? Um, and then after about a month, we still see you. We're going to be like, no, you getting your tail back up there. Um, I don't care if it's a PT situation, a situation with the coach. Resolve those situations. Um, you know, these guys, some of these guys who've been to college, of course, like Bro Rufus and CJ and these other guys who played ball and tuck. Um, these guys will tell you on this football field and Jordan, same way, you're going to be up there playing and, 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 and playing ball. You sometimes not going to always get your way. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's not going to work out. You know, you have a church family. You call us. Let us pray with you. Um, let us let us let us give you some advice and some encouragement. Don't quit. Don't, there, there, there's quitters all around this community right now. Some woulda, coulda, shouldas. I mean, they should be in the NFL and the NBA and Major League Baseball right now. There's some woulda, coulda, shouldas. Don't fall into that same trap. I pass by people right now. They should be on TV right now. They should, be, they, should, they should be in magazines right now with the kind of skills they have. Learn from their mistakes. Learn from their mistakes. Zach, you want to be a paramedic? You want to be a fireman? Man, go all the way, man. We want you to be... I, I don't know what you... What is that? What is a head fireman? What is a fire chief? We want you to be a fire chief, man. We want you to be the chief of the firemen. We want you to go all the way to the top. And I pray that the anointing and the favor of Joseph is on you, man. As you go to school and as you go to class, man, and you learn that God's anointing and God's favor will be all over your life. And so that's what we pray today. So, man, if y'all can kind of just put hands on these guys and get close and we're going to pray for get close as we can, men. We're going to pray for them and get as if you can't get all the way in touch a touch a brother that's touching a brother and we're going to pray for these young men and church if y'all can point your hands this way to these young men we're going to pray over them father god we thank you right now for these young men i first of all give you praise because these young men are still alive they're still here today i thank you god that today we ain't got to visit them in a prison house we ain't got to visit them in a jail house i thank you that we didn't have to drag them out of crack house and a whole house this morning i thank you that they're in god's house on today and god today as they move to another level and today as they move to another dimension in life i pray holy father god for a fresh anointing to be all over them god give them the favor of joseph god give them the favor of joseph all over their lives god as they go to college and as they play sports god give them the favor that they need in order to succeed god and i pray god that you'll always be at the foremost of their mind god be at the forefront of their mind god anytime they're being tempted god oh god i pray that you show them the consequences of their temptation show them the consequences of making bad choices oh but god and also show them the consequences of of doing the right thing 
God, as they live for you and as they serve you, God, I thank you for blessings that will be on their lives, God. And God, right now, I pray a special prayer of protection all over them, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, as, as Jordan goes to Atlanta, God. Oh, God, as, 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 as Buddy goes up to Lynchburg, Virginia, God. Oh, God, as Zach goes to school, God, for firemen, God. I pray, God, for, for divine protection to be all over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Protect them as they travel. Protect them on the field. Protect them in the classroom. Protect them wherever they go, God. Protect them in their dorm rooms, God. Oh, devil, we want you to know right now we come against every demonic attack against their lives. We thank you that there be no quitting in their future. We thank you that there be no throwing in the towel in their future. We thank you that they will complete what they start. We thank you that they'll finish what they started, God. We thank you that there's greatness ahead of them, God. We thank you that there is greatness ahead of them, God. I thank you for an extraordinary life ahead of them, God. We thank you for prosperity in their future. We thank you for greatness in their future, God. We thank you for success in their future, God. As they keep you first, you promise that you will add to their lives, God. And we thank you for addition and multiplication, God. We thank you for addition and multiplication on their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And God, we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the honor. And we will give your name the praise. In the mighty and the miraculous and the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. We say amen, amen, amen. Come on, church. Let's thank the Lord for these men. <laughs> Fellas, why don't we give these brothers a good bear hug and come on in and let's thank the Lord for these brothers. Come on, church. Let's thank the Lord a little bit more. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ain't having their funeral. We're celebrating another level in their lives. Yes, Lord. We're, we're not sending them to the cemetery. We're thanking God for the next dimension in their lives and the next level in their lives. Amen. 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 Glory to God. 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 Amen. Amen. We're going to be doing this in about another four or five years for y'all college graduations. Amen. 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 Come on, church, one more time. Give God praise.